welcome back to Contextual Electronics. This is a video about creating new schematic symbol libraries. The reason we're going to go over this one is because this is actually something I had a, a, a big problem with, especially you know trying to figure out where do you how do you create a brand new library. There's really no menu for directly creating a new library, and so if we dig into the program, we can actually uh, show you know older libraries. So let's do that first. So open up a blank project, open up the e schema and then open up the library editor. All right, so in the library editor, normally what we do, as you've hopefully watched the other videos, is select our working library, which in this case we can just open up device, which is the standard generic library there. And then if we open up a com component in here, just a very simple capacitor. All right, so we have capacitor. Uh, this is great. We can, we can modify this, we can take it, we can clone it to a, a new component. Um, but it was really difficult to think, okay, so we have the device library. How do I then uh, create a brand new library? So let's look at let's look at all the libraries we actually have enabled right now. Uh, so let's see. So here are all of the different libraries that I have in my system right now. And these are all a lot of defaults. This is a uh, uh, this is the one from Circuit Hub as well, so that shows up most of the time. Uh, but say, we don't want just Motorola and Texas Instruments parts. Maybe we want a, a smaller, newer vendor like a, a Touchstone or something like that. You know, if you do want to do it by vendor, you're going to be adding a lot of vendor libraries. Um, and for that reason, I personally don't really like it that way. But uh, a lot of these are default libraries. So how how do we add a new library? So let's let's just go over how I <laughs> first did it. I went in here. I said, oh well, I could probably just try typing in. Uh, brand new, oh geez, brand new dot lib. Right? Oh, I'll create that. It will show up down here. All right, there it is, brand new dot lib. We hit OK. And then, oh yeah, of course, you can't actually add that because it doesn't exist yet. And that's kind of the problem here. So we actually need to create a new library. Now, there's a couple ways we can do this. The first is going to be the slightly harder way. Uh, but you know, definitely, um, it works and it's reliable and it's it's nice because you kind of peer under the hood of KiCad. So I'm gonna open up actually the install directory here. This is where I have KiCad installed. And so uh, if we look, this is this should be similar for all the installs, at least the the binary folder, doc folder, share folder is actually where we keep all of our uh, footprints and schematics. So if we go into library. We can see this is actually search by type. If we go to dot lib, this is actually where all of the libraries live. Um, so that's you know we should take that into account here. Um, now we can we can just manually copy one library over to another, uh, but it, it then will have the exact same components in it. And really, if you if you open up a um, if you open up the actual library, which we can do here you'll see that there's more to it than just that. So, oh, is that the right file? Yeah, that's the right file. Uh, this one's a little messier than what I'm used to. Let's uh, go to a different one here. How about, that's a small one. Yeah, let's open this one up, contrib.library. Yeah, this is more along the line. This format a little better. So you can see that it's got the FX614 in there. It actually defines the part. It starts to draw it and everything, and then it says end and draw and definition, and then finally end the library. And so what we can do here is, uh, you know, these are all. You can see that it has signal signal names here as well, um, and and it's got the outline up here. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we could try and modify that directly, but instead, what I do is I just uh, modify this, delete this stuff and delete this. Sometimes you can also put encoding in here. Um, we'll just say 0101 2013, even though that's not right. Uh, and then we're going to save this as. We're going to call it brand new 2 just because in case it tries to pull in that one we already did there. Okay, so we'll go save the library folder. That's no fun. Uh, let's do a dot lib actually. And there we go. Oh man, I need to change my permissions. Let's see. 
So this is, it does look like this is read-only here, at least in Windows. And so that's probably, you know, it's probably a good idea to not put that in there in the first place. So let's, uh, let's go to the, my bench buddy folder here. Um, this is the project from session one if you don't if you're watching this in the future but uh, we can just save this in here and so we'll copy this oops and oops we'll go here brand new to dot lib all right so we save that now we can go into back into this and we can add the library and we can say, oh, it's not there yet. We got brand new. We don't have brand new two. So if we add that path, um, pinch buddy folder. So you see it added the folder there. And then we'll actually add the library. And brand new two is right there. And we should actually see it. And now we do. All right. So that was one way of adding it. That is the difficult way. Now what we could do is we could say, uh, we could save this component to that library. And so what we do is we would change the working library, even though this component is up here. We change the working library. To br Come on. Where are you? Where are you, brand new to? Uh, we might have to reload here. Uh, I think we do. Let me reload this. All right, so let's, uh, let's go back in here. Got brand new, just to verify. Hit OK. Let's try finding it now. Ah, there it is. OK. So we've got a active brand new 2 now. And then we can hit the uh, update the active component or in the current library. We'll hit that. Yep. And then we hit save to actually save the library. All right. And now we should be able to go back into the schematic and find that library. Let's do that. So we hit A, list all. Brand new two is the library we select, and there's a capacitor. All right, that's great. Now let's do this one different way here. So we're going to go back into the component library editor. And so we are still in the brand new two library. You can see it up here as well. However, uh, this is not the only, the, the way I just did it was the hard way, and it's not the only way of doing it. The other way of doing it is actually quite simple. Uh, so we're in brand new 2 and we have a active component and we simply click this button which saves it to a new library. So if we're trying to do this we call it not brand new 2, we call it brand new 3. And we save it. Yep, and then we have to actually activate it. So that created the library and so this is really what we're trying to, what I'm trying to show here is that, that flow is actually really wonky. You wouldn't think, oh, you know, you have to actually pull up a component first. You'd think create library, then put component into it. So the first way I showed was the way that I thought it was going to be done. And then this is the way that it's much easier done. So you actually load up a, a existing library, pull up a component within that library, and then you copy that to a new library. And that's really what we're doing here. So if we go into library here, we still have that same path. We don't have brand new 3, but we should be able to find it real easy. Brand new 3. Hit OK. Still can't find that original one that we just tried creating in the, in the dialog. And then if we close this, and we hit A here, list all, brand new 3, and there it is. So that's how you add a new library in the library editor. Hopefully you found that useful. And hopefully you're out creating lots of fun new libraries and parts that you enjoy. Thanks for watching.